All right, today we're gonna to go through how to build a development version of Betaflight Black Box Explorer and the Betaflight Configurator. Okay, so there's a lot of times where there is new things in the development versions of Betaflight Black Box Explorer and the configurator, and you might want to download those and start to use them. Uh, you know, this is for people that are, you know, really interested in just new features and things of that nature. I wouldn't say they're critical until you get to stable releases, but for example, right now there's something in the Black Box Explorer where you can get the waterfall graph or the spectrum plot. Uh, so that it can differentiate between what throttle values the noise is at, and it's, and it's right in Black Box Explorer. One of the simplest ways to do that for Betaflight Black Box Explorer is you can simply go to the repo and then go ahead and hit download, clone, and you just hit this download zip file here, and then you can add that right in the Chrome. And I have a video on that. I will link that to the upper right-hand corner, which would be this side, I guess, and it shows that. But you know, with the Chrome app, a lot of people don't like to do that. I still have Chrome on my computer because of the BL Heli Configurator Chrome app. And uh, one thing I do like about uh, having the executable is that you can double click on logs and it just opens in Black Box Explorer. Whereas the Chrome app, you gotta launch the Chrome app and go open the file. I just like the double click ability uh, with the install version of it. Now for the Betaflight Configurator, you, do, you don't go to the repo to download the Chrome app. You would have to go to the Betaflight Configurator here under the Betaflight Jenkins and click on that. And then once you're in there, there is a Chrome build of it that you can download, put in a directory. You can see the Chrome build right here put it in a directory and then do an unpacked extension. The same thing you would do for the Black Box Explorer you can do for the configurator. Again, I've noticed that it, when you switch to the expert toggle or expert mode that toggles itself back, it will just be really nice to have your own build. But there's no EXE here for Windows users. And then same thing for the Betaflight Black Box Explorer. Even under the Jenkins, there is no Betaflight Black Box Explorer here. You can only really download it from the repository. If you're looking to find the repositories for the Betaflight Configurator or Black Box Explorer, just go to Google and type in Betaflight Configurator. And nine times out of 10, it will be right here as one of the search results. Hey, look at me, I'm showing up in the world. This video right here actually talks about how to download it as a Chrome app and install it as a Chrome app. But today, again, we're gonna focus on how to make an EXE file. And to make an EXE file, we're gonna use Betaflight Black Box Explorer as an example, because I've already done the configurator. And we wanna browse down here, and it's really just following these instructions. So there's this program called Node.js you need to download and install. Again, go to Google, type in Node.js download. You will usually see the link. I will drop this link below. Here's the HTML. I am on a Windows 7 platform, so I'm going to grab the 64-bit Windows 7 and install that program. I'm not gonna show how to install it. It's just installing a program. You know, install it, or you download it, you know, from the EXE, next, 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 next. Just install it, the default. The next thing we need to do is get Black Box Explorer or the configurator on your computer. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either just download the, the repo as a zip file. So you could, again, just download the zip file and put it in a directory somewhere on your computer and that will download essentially all this content. This is essentially just think of this as a directory on GitHub. Same thing for the configurator, of course, or what I'm gonna do is add it in to GitHub Desktop. I have a video on GitHub Desktop. I will link that in the upper right thing but I'm gonna bring that over now and we will show just how to add this in. So to connect to the Betaflight Blackbox Explorer, we're gonna do it through forking the repo. So to do that, I'm gonna go up here and click fork and that will copy the GitHub project into my local repository on GitHub. Now, if you don't have a GitHub account and you don't wanna fork it, you can just click this link here, copy this URL and you can go in to GitHub desktop, hit file, go down to clone repository, go to URL, paste the repository here, and then pick a location on your computer to put it, and then hit clone. I'm not gonna do that. That basically just makes a local copy directly from the Betaflight repository versus I'm copying, kind of forking the project into my own repository, and then I'm gonna bring it down that way. So there's just two different ways. Again, the simplest way, if you don't wanna get into GitHub Desktop at all, is you just hit this download zip file, get all this content, put it on a spot in your computer. Since I do have this fork now, I can just hit the clone and download on my own 
fork copy here and hit open in desktop. That brings up this dialog, hit open link. And if that doesn't work for some reason, you would just go to file, clone repository. And right here under my get account, you can see I have it right here. I'm going to accept that location. That's where I do want it to go. And I'm going to hit clone. Now what that means is it's copying the files from GitHub, either from the Betaflight Project Direct or your own local fork of it and copying it down to your PC. That's what cloning means. After it has opened up, I always like to go over here and hit fetch. And that just makes sure everything's in sync. Uh, from there, you should be able to browse to the location you specified. So you can see I'm going to go under Z, Spatzinger, and then under here, I should have this black box log viewer, and then the project, all the content from the GitHub should be uh, located there. So it really just copied it all down. Now I could make changes and then push it back up. It's kind of a check in, check out system. At that point, we are done with GitHub Desktop, so I can go ahead and minimize that. And we're just going to be focusing here on this directory. After you have the node.js installed, you want to go open your command window. So just go to um, the start menu, go to run, and type cmd, and that should open up the command prompt. From here, we're just really following these instructions. So I installed node.js. Next, I'm going to install yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code right here and then just right click on the command window and that should paste it in and then just hit enter. This can take a little bit of time, like a couple seconds to process, so just give it a second. Next, you want to change to your project folder. I'm gonna go to here, grab this directory, type in Z, Z colon, then type in CD and paste that path again, hit enter, and that put me in as my active directory in the command prompt into this where this project is located. After we're switched into the project directory, don't forget you have to type yarm install. So go ahead and type yarm install. And again, this can take a little bit of time to process, so just let it do its thing. After that is done, you could type yarm start, and that will just load the program either Betaflight Configurator or Betaflight Blackbox Explorer, kind of as a debug instance, you know, it will you know, build it and run it. So you can do that to kind of check it. I'm going to skip that right now, and I'm going to go to yarm gulp, which will build it. The task name you can see down here is dist app debugger release. We're going to do apps that will make a build version and then the platform is whatever platform you want to build it for so you can see here I'm Windows 32 user so I want to or Windows user so I want to use Windows 32 so from here we're going to do yarm gulp apps dash dash win 32 and again this can take a little time so just let it run through these when I say take a little time these take about 30 seconds to a minute at the most but uh, for the purpose of the recording, obviously I'm gonna pause. Now as things are going through the process, if you keep an eye on this directory, you will see things come in and go out, you know, so it's making changes to these files, it's adding, it's going through the build process, like when you do the YARM install, things of that nature. So you can kind of visually see, you know, some things happening as you're typing these, uh, these commands out. Ultimately, we're looking for an apps directory to appear, and that will have our compiled code with the exe file. And now that it's gone through the whole process there, which took about uh, three minutes, I will go down to apps, and then in here you will see Betaflight Blackbox Explorer, Win32, and boom, there's our whole directory. So I can go ahead and launch this from this location, and I will have an EXE version of Betaflight Blackbox Explorer. So the final step for me at least would be to grab this, all this content in this directory, go to the install location for where Blackbox Explorer is installed by the stable release when you download the install exe and get it all installed and then paste this into it. It's going to ask if you overwrite files. We're going to go ahead and hit yes. We're going to hit yes for folder conflicts as well and paste that in. You can see which files it did not overwrite some of the uninstall applications so that's good. And then at this point I should be able to go to any of my black box files, click on them, and it should open up in the new release. And sure enough, I uh, open the log, open Black Box Explorer. You can see I'm on 3.4 at this time, which is newer than the 3.3, which is the stable. When I click on a spectrum trace here now as well, 
It opens up the spectrum analyzer. If I hit the expand window here, I can see this new drop down that allows me to look at it at frequency versus throttle. And then you can see the motor band right here. You can adjust the intensity by raising this slider. And you can see up here how I, at uh, you know, around 80, above 80% throttle, I really start getting some higher frequency, so higher amplitude uh, noise here. And that's why I have the TPA to kind of dampen that down as much as I can. And you can use obviously this slider to, to kind of adjust the scaling here. What's really neat as well is I just noticed that in this most current build, that they actually have the filter diagram overlaid here as well, which is really cool. It's basically showing me that the cutoff of 60 to 170, so it's 60 hertz, 170 hertz, and how the, as I increase throttle here, this is my throttle percentage, how that filter cutoff goes up from, again, 60 to 170. So I can compare that against my denoise spectrum here. So I did a spectrum trace on D roll and you can see you know anywhere below that line uh, the filter is attenuating any of those vibrations now this is roll on pitch here you can see I have a little bit more of a noise issue and I do have this uh, resonance spike on this frame now or for I don't know if it's the frame or another part it used to not be there so I have to look into it that uh, obviously anywhere that I'm going above, I don't know, say 50% throttle, I'm totally leaving this unattenuated. So you can see that that kind of grows in magnitude here. And I'm really hitting everything up in this area with this specific filter setup. So it's kind of neat as you have the filters on now and here as well that they show up here. And then again, also if I click on this drop down, I can change this back to just frequency and see the filter overlay there as well. Well, that is it. Hopefully this helped show you how to build the Betaflight Configurator, same steps, and Betaflight Black Box Explorer, and how you can use those builds then and copy them into the install paths and then use those uh, in pre-release. Uh, obviously, Black Box Explorer is pretty safe. There's nothing going to happen there. Do be concerned, you know, in the configurator, you're using a beta release. There could be unintended consequences. You know, for example, sometimes in the beta configurators, configurator releases, you'll set one thing and it will set something else as the program is evolving. So you're, you know, Black Box Explorer, there's really no risk, but uh, the configurator, um, you know, you're using a beta release, you're building your own, you have to associate the responsibility there. If contributing to the Betaflight project is something you're interested in, I always know that they welcome loads of help with the graphical user interface side. It seems like most people want to participate in the project in, you know, coding up stuff for Betaflight. But the configurator and Black Box Explorer, go ahead and get on the Betaflight Slack. There's links on any of the, uh, the repos and uh, chime in there or raise your hand. I'm sure it will be definitely welcomed. Thanks, everybody, and I hope this helped.